What's up you guys, it's Steve here, and midterm elections are just right around the corner. And now just being revealed are the primary agenda items, the things that are gonna be focused on by the Republicans and the Democrats. I've got video footage for you on these, and we're hearing about social security increases, focusing on children and families, uh, talks about the economy, and I've got video footage of President Joe Biden touting their accomplishments and saying more is on the way if Democrats stay in power. I'm gonna get you caught up on the latest. This is your breaking news, stimulus check update, and stimulus package update. Now, first off, let me know your thoughts. Uh, if all things equal, just as they stand right now, are you going to be going Republican or Democrat? Now, what if Republicans came out and said, uh, in addition to the agenda items you're about to hear, will in also include uh, stimulus checks using existing federal funds? Or what if Democrats did that? If either party were willing to do that to send out fourth federal level checks, would that sway your vote? Would that convince you to go for a particular party? Or are you just committed to one particular one, you guys? Well, what we're hearing is uh, it could be a toss up. It could be anybody's game here. Now, before we Take a look at the headlines. Also wanted to mention, second channel, Steve Ram Finance. If you're concerned about the economy and we're hearing about real estate market crashes happening around the nation in different markets, check out the last video I did, you guys. We're hearing that the economy is suffering. I'm going to keep you up to date on uh, financial uh, success and growing wealth on that channel. But on this channel, I'm going to let you know what Congress is going to be doing, how they're going to be responding to that, you guys, because we're hearing the economy that is still a number one concern right now of the American people. People are still hurting and saying they need help. And they are not convinced that Biden and the Democrats are, uh, are getting things done. Take a look at these headlines, you guys. Biden struggles, as does his party, as most Democrats look elsewhere for 2024. According to polls, the economy and inflation are among the top issues heading into the midterm elections. And let me know your thoughts, but I think across the board, the vast majority of people would say the state of the economy, inflation, these high prices, getting it under control and sending out assistance to the American people is their number one top priority. We've heard that 80% of the population says, I would take a fourth federal level check. I don't want to add to debt and inflation, but if they send me one, I would take it because I could use some help right about now. And take a look at these, you guys. Biden's approval and midterm vote preferences. Biden's job of approval, 39% approve, 53% disapprove. That is pretty bad. Now, among registered voters at this time, Republicans are edging out Democrats by just 1%, according to polls, so it could be anybody's game. And among likely voters, those that are most likely to actually vote, we're seeing that Republicans 51%, Democrats 46%. So Republicans edging out Democrats in this. We'll see if things swing in favor of the Republican Party. And we've heard Kevin McCarthy, he's saying he's getting ready. You're going to see it here in just a second to take over the House. And Nancy Pelosi is going to hop on a plane, head over to Italy and be the ambassador over there if that happens. And also take a look at this state of the economy under Biden. Now here you can see in purple, not so good. 74% of people say that and 24% say it's excellent or good. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I'd like to know who the 24% are, you guys, because uh, across the board, things are looking kind of rough. But let's dive into the video footage, get you caught up as to what Biden is saying. Then, like I said, I've got some video footage so you can see both the Democrat and Republican perspectives, what's coming out right now as to what is going to be on the way here. Now, before we dive in, do me a quick favor. If you appreciate the updates, smash the like button for me. Hit the subscribe button to stay up to date. It's totally free. I'll keep you up to speed on everything going on. Any specific questions, shoot them to me in the DM on Instagram at SteveRam3. Like I said, second channel, more content for you. And also, if you'd like to get access to the comprehensive list of every single stimulus check in the nation on every level, states, cities, counties, for the past three months, I was working every single day, hunting down every single program, putting it all into one place. And it's at www.reliefroadmap.com if you are interested. Uh, and also, before we dive in, wanted to mention that this week I am going to be away at a real estate conference in Las Vegas. So I will continue to keep you guys up to date, but it might not be as frequent. Uh, or if breaking news comes out, it might be a little bit late on it, just simply because uh, I'm going to be working on some of my uh, real estate business stuff, you guys. But I will still be here for you. I'll still try to get uploads up to you uh, as quick as I can. Uh, but with that being said, you guys, let's take a look at this video footage of what Biden said they've accomplished. And then we're going to take a look at the plan moving forward. Over the past 10 months, we've won passage of some, uh, I think, extraordinary parts of our economic agenda. Uh, the bipartisan infrastructure law, the biggest infrastructure package since the Eisenhower administration, with the help of some of our friends on the other side of the aisle. The CHIPS Act, uh, a law to spur investments and uh, microchips, which I might 
point out were invented here in the United States of America and refined, but uh, the CHIPS Act is a gigantic investment and it's going to create a number of jobs and technologies for the future. The Inflation Reduction Act, uh, the law brings down the cost of prescription drugs, health premiums, health care premiums, and invests in a made in America and a clean energy future. And uh, the three things, along with other steps we've taken, like the American Rescue Plan, student debt relief, and is proof that uh, democracy can deliver for the people. And there's a foundation of a kind of strong, forward-looking economy that we want to continue to build. <clears throat> The economy with lower prices, uh, more breathing room for middle-class families, an economy with good-paying jobs you can raise a family on and, and uh, just have, as I said, just a little bit of breathing room, uh, whether you went to college or not. An economy that leads the world in technology and clean energy, and an economy that ends our dependence on foreign sources uh, across the entire supply chain. And so, uh, this economy that works for the country uh, from the bottom up and the middle out, as I said from the beginning. I'm not a big fan of trickle-down economics. Uh, I find it's the, the trickle stops fairly uh, quickly coming down. But when, the, when working folks are doing well, middle class is doing well, the wealthy do very well. Everybody does well. <clears throat> and so today, I've assembled the cabinet uh, uh, to lay out in detail how we're going to implement each of these laws that we worked so hard to get passed and we've gotten passed. And because passing these historic bills is only the first step in delivering to the American people, um, but it's just that, it's the first step. I've asked each relevant cabinet agency to come forward today with a plan uh, to help get the American people and our economy uh, on the right side as fast as possible and uh, to spend taxpayers' money wisely. I might add, with all these legislations we passed, Madam Vice President, we've still reduced the deficit substantially. In our first year, over $300 billion, and this, this year, it's estimated to be somewhere in excess of a trillion, 500 billion, maybe as much as a trillion, 700 billion. So there you have it, you guys. That was President Joe Biden touting the accomplishments of the Democrats. And let me know, do you think that they've done enough? Uh, do you think they're going to have to do more in order to win in these midterm elections? Or do you think they've done enough to be able to grasp a victory? Now, also, just wanted to clarify something because I've got a lot of people that have asked me this recently, and that is President Biden saying that they're reducing the deficit. And they're saying, but if that's the case, why is inflation still going up and why are we still feeling the pain of high prices? Well, it's because just to clarify, uh, they have not reduced the deficit from where it stands. They have just reduced the amount of increase. And just to share with you guys, here's the official bipartisan policy deficit tracker, just to show you. And you can see uh, in green is 2020, during the pandemic first hit, uh, there was significant increases in the deficit because they were sending out new spending to help combat the pandemic. In the yellow, you can see 2021, uh, they were adding to the deficit regularly. And then 2022 is lower, but we're still adding to the debt. The debt is still going. We're still still feeling inflation. It's just not as extreme because we are now uh, further along through the pandemic. So they're spending less, but they're still spending nonetheless. Don't think that our deficit is dropping by any means. It just means it's not going up as quickly, but it's still going up. We are still going into debt. We are still spending. We are still in a deficit. So just wanted to clarify that because some people were under the impression that we we're reducing the deficit, actually taking the overall amount down. Uh, that is not the case uh, at, at all, you guys. <laughs> so just to clarify, you can tell that just by looking at the gas pumps and the food prices. Uh, but with that being said, let's take a look at some video footage that's coming out right now uh, about the agenda items that are being brought to the forefront as midterm elections approach from Democrats and Republicans. And I covered this a little bit in previous videos, and they're saying Social Security, uh, child tax credits, stuff for children and families. There's an assortment of different things that are coming to the forefront. Uh, audits, the 87,000 uh, IRS new hires all of these coming up take a look let me know your thoughts ruling speeches today from president biden and house republicans as they try to turn out voters just 46 days before the midterms in the swing state of pennsylvania the minority leader kevin mccarthy laid out his blueprint of what republicans will do if they take back control of the house the major focuses inflation and crime in dc president biden gave his rebuttal of sorts point by point he said Leader McCarthy's plan had little to no detail and failed to mention Republican efforts to roll back abortion rights or propose cuts to Medicare and Social Security. So in 46 days, America's going to choose. 
Republicans win control of the Congress, abortion will be banned. Republicans control the Congress, Social Security will be on the chopping block. This November, you have to choose to be a nation of hope, unity, and optimism, or a nation of fear, division, and darkness. President Biden promising to codify Roe v. Wade and to pass an assault weapons ban if Democrats maintain control of Congress. CNBC's senior congressional correspondent Elon Moy was at Leader McCarthy's speech for his pitch to Americans, and she has that for us. Hi, Elon. Well, Chef, this was really an attempt by Republicans to unify the party around a proactive agenda. It took place at a factory just outside of Pittsburgh that makes duct work. Roughly three dozen GOP lawmakers were there, both rank and file and members of leadership. And McCarthy even got a standing ovation when he came out to speak. But the commitment to America is more of a set of principles rather than a detailed plan. The top of the list is inflation and the economy. And when I got a chance to speak to McCarthy, I tried to press him on exactly what he would do on taxes and rising prices. Well, the first thing we would do is make sure those tax increases don't come back in, in our tax cuts. Make those permanent as you go forward. Stop the runaway spending. For what this, is, this Congress has spent more than any others in the short amount of time. I'd like to take away what the Democrats have done, taking away the work incentive, paying people more to stay home than go to work. We've got a workforce problem out there. He also said the first bill Republicans would introduce would be to get rid of the 87,000 IRS agents that the Biden administration intends to hire. Now that line got a round of applause, but beyond the economy, this new agenda would focus on things like public safety, crime in the border, schools and kids, including making sure that only women play in women's sports and government accountability, such as holding hearings on the origins of COVID. And we've drafted a plan for a new direction, one that actually has the solutions to it. We think an election should actually have contrast. We think the election should be about ideas. We think the American public should make that decision. We're not afraid to lay our ideas out. Now, it's not just voters that McCarthy has to convince. It's also his fellow Republicans who don't always sing from the same hymnal. Chef, I asked McCartney, McCarthy directly if he is confident that he can get his entire caucus behind this agenda. He told me 100 percent. Kevin McCarthy and Republicans saying they are confident they're going to be taking these midterm elections. There's going to be a Republican Congress and we're going to see that Republican agenda begin to roll out. And that means uh, money for families. We're hearing about child tax credits, more tax cuts, uh, so many different things we will see. Let me know your thoughts. But whatever unfolds, I'll keep you up to date every step of the way here on the channel, you guys. But with that being said, thank you so much for joining me. I'll catch you in the next one. Like I said, I'm going to be in Vegas this week, so uh, video uploads might be a little bit less than normal. Uh, but I'm still here for you guys. Also, hit the like button if you made it this far. If you appreciate the content, hit subscribe to stay up to date. I'll let you know everything that unfolds. Any specific questions, Instagram at SteveRam3. Consider joining my second channel, Steve Ram Finance, to learn about growing wealth, personal finance, the real estate market, the recession, everything that's unfolding, and www.relieffroad.com map.com to get access to the comprehensive list of every single stimulus check in the nation that I spent three months on every single day assembling for you guys all in one easy to access place from your phone your tablet or your computer uh, but with that being said you guys thank you so much for joining me once again and I'll catch you in the next one take care God bless this is Steve